This show is powered by BL3P, the lightning enabled European Bitcoin exchange. Connect the build. Brutzoll Raspberry Blitz, Germany. Germany is famous for its love of beer and the country has more than 1300 breweries producing over 5000 different types of beer. Oktoberfest, a 16-day festival held annually in Munich, is the largest beer festival in the world. Do you dream of having a lightning-enabled beer tap at home? Yes. Have you ever tried to explain the lightning network to someone who knows nothing about Bitcoin, only to end up more confused than when you started? Probably yes. Do you think it's plausible that Satoshi Nakamoto was an advanced AI from the future sent to lay the foundation for a decentralized financial system? Yeah. <laughs> DJ equipment has evolved significantly over the past years, from turntables and vinyl records of the past to modern digital controllers and software nowadays. Do you prefer DJing using software over the good old fashioned way of using turntables? Yeah. I spend more time debating about Bitcoin's energy consumption than I prefer to. Ja. Is 21 or 21 in German your lucky number? Ja. I prefer a bratwurst over a currywurst. Nein. <laughs> the 2024 UEFA European Football Championship a championship commonly referred to as UEFA Euro 2024 will be held in Germany. Does the German national team make a chance to win the title? No. Have you ever accidentally sent Bitcoin to the wrong address? No. Are you Satoshi Nakamoto? No. Welcome to the Connect the World weekly podcast. I'm Edward. And I'm Steph. We are ready to take you with us into the beautiful world of the Lightning Network. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the ride. ride. This is episode uh, 73 of Connect the World. Together we are here, uh, Steph. Uh, I'm here and we have a guest. His name is Rutzel. <laughs> hey, Rutzel. Hello. Hi there. And this show is made possible by BL3P, the European Bitcoin Exchange um, running in the Netherlands. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, guys, thank you for helping us uh, in our mission. And if you also want to help out in our mission, then follow us on Twitter, subscribe at YouTube. Or um, if you have some questions, then go to our Telegram group and uh, you can uh, ask everything you like. And of course, you can also donate there. Let's head over to the highlight for this week. Connect o mundo. Yeah, Steph, this one is, uh, yeah, well, this is really for you, right? The rings of fire, <laughs> come on. Yeah, the rings of fire, man. <laughs> Whoa. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I lost count in, uh, in how many hours I spent on this project. Crazy. Yeah. Way too much, maybe, but. Um, way uh, too much. I, I can't tell my wife because then obviously she will leave me and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and say you're completely out of your mind. But um, no, Ring of Fire, man. Yeah, Edward, uh, yeah, maybe well, it's good for you to explain yeah, what, perhaps what this project is all about. It's uh, good to do that. Well, uh, we started it um, a long time ago. And last year at Bitcoin Amsterdam, we also uh, did a workshop um, uh, presence on the stage there together. And we uh, we shown there um, uh, the, the, um, uh, the world because we have the world on the website of uh, Rings of Fire. And there you can see all the nodes uh, connected, uh, all the channels. And I think we are now uh, something around 60 Bitcoin or something. Something yeah, like that. Yeah. No, I think a little At that less, time it was uh, touching the 50. Yeah, so uh, yeah, and, and now of course it's, uh, it's a little bit uh, slower, but uh, it will uh, get there eventually again. Um, what is it, Rings of Fire? Well, it's a, a community-driven project. That's the most important thing. So uh, every member has a, a Lightning Node. Uh, and if you want to get started on your Lightning Node, you want liquidity to be on both sides of your channel. And that's where uh, Rings of Fire come in. It uh, revolutionized the Lightning Network by solving liquidity issues. Um, there are a lot of possibilities, but Rings of Fire is fun. It's entertaining. 
it's a, it's a nice way to learn and um, you uh, get connected to a lot of people, uh, international uh, people, uh, and and that's really great. I think that's, that's maybe the best yeah, part. Yeah, it's the best part. I mean, in my, in my opinion. And I, I was wondering, uh, Ruto, you're familiar with the project. You told us in the, the pre-talk. Um, but but how do you manage your um, your inbound and outbound liquidity? How do you, do you use a service for it or... Are you just um, uh, yeah talking to your peers to open new channels or? Yeah, basically, I'm um, I'm very lucky because I know people like Fulmo and yeah. they run a very very well connected node. So if I just need to get something going, uh, I take the easy route and and open a channel to Fulmo. So that's but that's that's my personal connection there. So um, so yeah, that's 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 a very easy way to have good friends that are well connected. Is always a good a good yeah. big way. And also for yeah, and, the, and the funny thing is because um, nodes don't uh, think uh, geographically obviously, but yeah, uh, yeah we we like to give it a, um, a geographic touch so we um yeah we we gather all those people from around the world and then opening channels from different countries to each other and again it, it, it doesn't doesn't make real sense but it's it's funny because you you talk to people from uh, the other side of the world and then um uh, a part of just opening a channel to that person you also get to know that person and you you hear their story behind why why they need that channel or why they start uh, running a, a bitcoin node uh, and a lightning node of course um, so I think that's, um, uh, well, I, w I would say maybe even more important, uh, the, the story behind that person, uh, and especially in uh, emerging uh, countries, of course. Yeah, it tells something um, about, uh, about the situation there, or maybe uh, they want to become a merchant or just uh, want to get uh, busy experimenting. Uh, and that's uh, that's re really fun. And I I, I, mean, I thought I have well, a lot of Germans, by the way, <laughs> yeah, joining those rings lot. because I don't know the Einundzwanzig community is obviously the the biggest community in uh, in in Germany. Um, uh, so yeah, it's good to have uh, good to to keep that connection yeah. uh, between uh, both of our communities. Oh, for people who want to yeah. know uh, the whole story, because now we're talking about Rings of Fire. We also um, uh, recorded that session at Bitcoin Amsterdam uh, because there were a lot of Bitcoiners there who didn't know uh, Rings of Fire or who aren't into Lightning. Um, and uh, we recorded it. It's on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Just uh, search for Rings of Fire uh, and Connect the World. And uh, you can also scroll uh, in uh, the audio podcasting uh, app of your choice uh, to October uh, last year. Uh, and there is also a recording. And of course, the Telegram group t.me Satoshi Radio ROF. If you go there, then uh, you're in the group with uh, how how many members now? Uh, more than a thousand, thousand sixty-one. I see. So that's uh, and obviously you need place. a lightning node to participate, yep. guys. And and Russell, do you maybe have a? Um, uh, piece of software you can recommend <laughs> so, so to run a lightning node you mean oh that that's a very complicated stuff i heard so um <laughs> but but let me let me look I, I think i yeah yeah i have a recipe blitz oh, yeah. that's a nice yeah, yeah, I something with the blitz. About it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's very quick <laughs> all right <laughs> nice let's get into it steph <laughs> yes connecta el mundo yeah, let's give yeah. you a uh, a proper welcome, Ruth. So welcome the man, again. Yeah, yeah. By this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great to have you on the show, man. Good to have you. Yeah. My pleasure. I, I was wondering, um, you said, uh, well, we asked you, have you ever tried to explain Lightning Network to someone who knows nothing about Bitcoin, only ends up more confused than when you started? And uh, can you tell us more about it? I can imagine that maybe um, at some point you think, well, let's, uh, yeah, let's just mm. not talk about Bitcoin because it's way too complica complicated to explain. Um, um, yeah, maybe that's that's a little bit the wrong image, but uh, the I had recently gave a workshop on on f running a full node uh, in uh, in Bavaria. There is a one Volksbank, which is kind of a traditional bank, uh, and they very they now really kind of get expertise in Bitcoin and, and pitch this a little bit to their community there. And I had people uh, in in this workshop, and afterwards they were then telling me they. They they were they they I lost them uh, at one point and they got a little bit more confused in the end. This is what what I was remembering. When ah, you asked okay, that yeah, question. but it's it's yeah that that will even because a lightning network can make it way more difficult, right? Because it, there's so much in between, right? Uh, I mean, just explaining Bitcoin can be all uh, a pain in the ass already, and then uh, you're talking about uh, explaining people how to run a full node. I mean, <laughs> come on, it's yeah, all, yeah, <laughs> so totally understand. It's, it was a, it was really a full node workshop. So, so it was really deep down, kind of try to give them yeah. a good picture 
of it. So, and then of course I, I got, I come a little bit more from the technical side when I'm explaining, yeah. um, even I'm, I think I'm have already some good slides in there, but at one point it can be maybe a little bit uh, too much there if you're really a beginner. Yeah. And, and I, I was wondering, are they, are they, do you have still um, a contact with, with, with the guys over there? I mean, uh, are they uh, inviting you uh, to come back another time or? <laughs> are they... oh, the, you mean the bank? They yeah, are, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. They, they really, they now want to really run a note in the bank. Oh, really? <laughs> That's, that's at yeah. least that's the plan. Okay. So so um, I'm happy to support them as much as I can. Um, and it's it's really I really like the idea of this uh, community uh, community local banks that are yeah. that are really there for the people on location. Um, that they that they become a little bit an expert on Bitcoin and Lightning for for the people there. So um, I really like this idea because not everybody will have this technical expertise and stuff. No. So and and I think those community banks that are um, not big 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 bad corporations that mm -hmm. are really more like really on grounded there mm -hmm. and always were caring about the financials of the people i think that makes just sense to have those uh, those those around yeah, and totally maybe have agree. a well-connected lightning node for them to easily connect their apps to yeah cool. yeah, yeah so you succeeded then i mean that's i mean we're on the way to succeed and it, yeah. and i have to say it was not my uh i was just invited there uh by another um, a person there that, that does it, that did a great job of onboarding the bank. So, um, so I just profiting from some from somebody else's work there. Perfect. Well, yeah. It's, I think I mean uh, if if you have to invite someone, you can better just invite yeah. someone who just created a piece of software, right? <laughs> 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 yeah. And um, yeah, you said uh, that you never have um, uh, accident accidentally sent Bitcoin to the wrong address, but. What was your <laughs> what was your greatest um, fail within Bitcoin? Yeah, I mean, some, did you some, lost keys, by <laughs> for instance? Or I, I will not tell you if I if I remembered or not, but I had a very very hard experience. Uh, you know, when you do a hardware wallet, you can put this extra password on there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, it's, that's that's really. I, it was so simple. I was saying, I, I do know this password. I will not write it down because this will be will be a problem then. And I'm sure I yeah. will remember. And then a year later, I, it really took me a lot of times, a lot of tries. Oh. And yeah. A lot yeah. of tries too. So you oh, the, you must be sweating there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, was kind of sweaty there. I mean, I had the, uh, I had the other words. So uh, that, that, that was fine. So I could kind of restart testing i could even you could even start maybe on the brute force. i'm always thinking about brute forcing stuff so yeah um but uh, yeah but it but it really had me sweating and and if, and always kind of already wrote it off so, so interesting yeah. because yeah. this this really shows that the your strategy uh, that uh, that uh, people might have uh, could be very good but you have to test it and I, yeah. I totally agree. I don't know what it was, but I also um, forgot uh, on one thing, a password. And then I thought, well, what w uh, was it then? And back then uh, I, I was um, always thinking about a particular password or making particular passwords. So thinking about myself, uh, I don't know, five years ago, that made me uh, uh, come up <laughs> with a solution. But it's, yeah, uh, but it's yeah. crazy. I also use <laughs> obviously hardware wallets, but I don't do a lot of transactions. If I do transactions, I, yeah. I'm yeah. Pff, well not nine out of ten times I'm just using the Lightning Network, you know. So that that one time that I'm doing a transaction, or I do, I, I must do a health check or something. I always need to, to fill in my pain and I'm always sweating. What was it again? What was it again? I was like, oh, you know, and all, always that, that sweaty moment, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's still, it's still, it's still if I send, send some Bitcoin around, I mean, not, not kind of small amounts for testing. I got very used to that, but, but if I really send a portion of funds yeah. around, it, it still gets me like, like a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> yeah. And, and the wrong address, it's, it's a funny joke, of course, because it's so complex that, that it's, almost never i Happens. i don't know of someone who really done that but it's more well, more probably go, you're gonna lose your keys or your seed and then uh, yeah, yeah. And normally you you yeah. copy paste the address right it's not like a bank yeah. account number that you just fill or in or your paper um, wallet reading, burns. reading it up and then <laughs> yeah but well there must be someone who uh, sent it to the wrong address right yeah <laughs> And what's your background, uh, Christian? Can you maybe tell us? Uh, because I saw your website. Uh, you mm -hmm. have all kinds of hobbies and, and things you're interested in. Uh, DJing, one of them, of course. But, but what's your real background? 
Yeah, I'm kind of I have a computer programming background, so uh, I studied that uh, kind of media informatics oh, okay. uh, at, at Bauhaus University Weimar. So um, and I had then um, and media informatics. It was always like like uh, like uh, like like to think about audio and video, and and I really got very early into podcasting there. I really saw this RSS technology that you can use to mm-hmm. to send your MP3s around yeah. or let people subscribe to that, and and for example, this one was one journey, and I even had a had a startup once in in the USA like uh, about podcasting in the beginning. Uh, didn't got rich, uh, didn't worked out, but I had a great experience uh, there, t- some learnings, and after that uh, startup experience, um, going back to university, I finished finished my studies. Um, but then had this feeling I, I I need to wash myself from this capitalist rush I was <laughs> in, and then was going into kind of open source educational software. So so more like on the open education uh, yeah. area. There was a project from our university that was funded and uh, searched for programmers, and I joined there. So I, had, I really liked the idea of have more material at school that you can use um, in a more open way. Um, I really enjoyed the, the working on open source, um, but then found kind of on the way Bitcoin. And this is, was the kind of most interesting open source project kind of I, I, I've seen in a long time and, and the opportunity to even jump in there and I couldn't resist. So um, no, I joined. No. So I joined basically the, the, the Berlin community here, um, like the Room 77 crowd yeah. um, back in the day. Um, kind of well connected there um, for a long time then and and then finally we got into this uh, crazy thing like that FOMO started with the lightning hack days and then the Raspberry Blitz project Which started. Yeah, changes yeah. Yeah. everything, yeah. yeah. And I'm curious <laughs> because, um, well, I, I'm also into music and all and mm-hmm. um, have you ever thought of combining, for instance, um, with um, uh, the project from, from Ben Ark? I'm f- just Alan Bits. <laughs> Alan, Alan Bits, yeah. yes. Yes, yes. Sorry, yes. sorry it's stupid and I don't know it, but um, it was not on top of my mind. But Alan Bits, uh, you can um, uh, play music and then, for instance, uh, display a QR code. I think a crypt- uh, a Crypto Gravity did, did a DJ set and then um, uh, he displayed a QR code where you where you could tip him or something like that. But mm-hmm. is this something uh, that you're also thinking of uh, bringing to stage? Or <laughs> it's it's in the back of my mind. Uh, there is um, maybe there's even a goal. Like by end of year, there is this big German um, conference in in Austria, uh, BTC twenty three, and at least that's my goal. That until then. Probably, hopefully, I cannot promise this hundred percent. But to have something integrated that that even they, they, that you can buy something like like a strobo light, like make it yeah. blink or something, yeah, exactly. that would be great. But I, but I, but it took me a little bit of time because I'm video mixing on my on my PC. Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking about how do I get the signal out, and then I have to put it through OBS. So yeah, to, put, to, yeah. to have it to have a layer over that, and always a stable internet connection yeah. uh, is always uh, on on conferences, especially when you're so in. in a DJ set up uh, late at night. Yeah. Um, that could be could be different, but there's a lot of things that could could uh, like, um, there's complexity to it. But yeah. I'm very looking forward to see what we can do there. Yeah, my my dream is because I also um, produce music and I release music at a, at a record label. And my dream is, but I'm I'm now retired, so it's not for me. But it it would be very nice to when you have an album release, for instance. Mm-hmm. We have I was in the harder harder dance music scene, and we have. We had all kinds of album release parties. Um, and my dream was, I also talked to one of the organ- uh, biggest organizations here in Holland who are behind DEFCON 1 and all, but I don't know if you're familiar with, with those uh, names, but it's one of the biggest organizations, I, I can say of the world, because Holland is um, uh, is, is one of the biggest uh, hard dance uh, scenes in the world. But um, my dream was to have an album release party and then um, uh, with, with visuals, obviously, and then every track you could scan a QR code and then you can just tip the artist for the track because you just like it or pay a little more and then have a download link download link to that song right away, you know? So if you think of, oh, I really like this song, you can just buy that right away and you just download it into your phone. That's possible with Ellen Bits. I mean, it's easily um, uh, uh, possible. And then maybe at the end of the of the night, when you uh, like all the music, you can just buy for a lot of more sets. Of course, you can just buy the whole al- album right away. I mean, that's always in my mind. And thinking, yeah, yeah that when you combine those two forces, it can be really, really awesome. I mean, we have to see. I can imagine that uh, for for a, a kind of dance party crowd, it's maybe not that 
They don't want maybe too much interaction. No. It's more like they want to do party. Yeah, they want to maybe, be in maybe, the flow. Maybe, maybe, They're maybe. not sober anymore, so they can <laughs> maybe Probably even not. just <laughs> not able to scan a, scan a QR code. You know, yeah. yeah. So, so think, but but for a Bitcoin crowd or uh, like conference crowd, I think that for, for sure they like they want to play while they were watching uh, the DJ set, and, and so that's definitely something I can can see. I yeah. mean, we have to see what's uh, what what. what what possibilities are out there right so yeah. um and have lightning like very easily small tipping things yeah. that's quite nice so yeah. um we have to see yeah with ellen bitch you can go sky's the limit right i mean uh you can do whatever you want <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, a lot of cool a lot of stuff to tinker <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 well this episode will be about raspberry blade so mm -hmm. um but yeah we prepared all <laughs> kinds of questions for you obviously um but it has to be in the 21 minutes so um, okay so yeah if you're ready root saw and edward uh, my man um yeah well, let's enter that part right yep let's do it all right let's do it connect Mundo. Okay, this is so easy. Rootsol, can you explain what Raspberry Blitz is for all those beginners who are uh, listening, perhaps, uh, and how it works and uh, what uh, the differences are? Okay, uh, I'll give it a try. So basically, <laughs> the Raspberry Blitz project, it's a Bitcoin and Lightning full node on a Raspberry Pi. So in its simplest version, um, so you can so that you can run it from home. Um, so you and, and it's a completely open source project. So it's not a company; it's more of a community. Uh, uh, and uh, you can go to the GitHub page to the to the raspberryblitz.org site, then click to the GitHub, and there you find a complete tutorial, uh, kind of what parts you do you need, like um, you, what, how you put it together, and then you can download the software. You can even build the software yourself, but for starters, you can just kind of download the image, put it on the SD card and put it in the Raspberry Pi, start it up and then kind of start your Bitcoin and Lightning journey. And it doesn't have to be a Raspberry, a raspberry um, right? You could also use a Nuke or a, yeah. a, a computer. I mean, you, it, it's it's kind of centered about around the Raspberry Pi at the moment, um, but there's of course a lot of experimentation going on with different hardware, um, a kind of used laptop or a kind of a Proxmox uh, virtualization home server. Those are kind of also stuff people are playing around. But to keep it simple and to keep it to one form factor that is most kind of tried out and experienced with, we we kind of stick to the Raspberry Pi at least for the for the next time for the for next. Kind and, of and, and then so. you uh, come up with a name change or. Uh... <laughs> That's a good question. Ooh. I don't know. It's always the thing. I think uh, just just to call it the blitz yeah, is the a blitz. little bit. I don't know. It's it's, it's a come on. I'm from Germany. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I was thinking I about know if that this earlier. Will work out. I didn't want to make a joke. So <laughs> yeah. And and do you have a a specific type of uh, uh, Raspberry Pi that you recommend? Or because uh, yeah, you have the older ones obviously. And you're now I think the the, the newest one is the the Raspberry uh, Raspberry Four, right? Yes, yes. Um, we we started a project. There was the Raspberry Pi three around, but I have to say this this is um, lucky that the that the Raspberry Pi four was coming out because it has especially the power boost that yeah. uh, um, comes comes in so handy. And also a lot of more RAM that's available now. Um, so I think with the Raspberry Pi 4, we really found kind of the the minimum kind of hardware platform. This three, I'm not recommending anymore. It's, okay. it's too slow. Okay, good to know. And what inspired you to, to create uh, Raspberry Blitz? You already told a bit of your background, but mm -hmm. what really inspired you to start with uh, Raspberry Blitz? And what was the development process like? I mean, uh, as I told you, we we started then those crazy lightning hack days uh, uh, in Berlin and then later on in other parts uh, of the world even. Um, and the idea was basically the lightning network was just going main uh, mainnet. So just kind of released uh, and to try out. And we all think, yeah, that sounds interesting, but how does it work? And we just kind of met there and make a kind of developer conference for all the technically interested people and basically teaching it, at, it ourselves and explaining yeah. it ourselves and, and then start to experimenting. And you always learn the best when you um, you also practically try it out. So we uh, some people already brought notes, uh, but a lot of people haven't really set up a good 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 setup. So we also started to to see, hey, we try this recipe pies. It's interesting because you need to have, basically you want to run it 24-7 uh, so all yeah. the time there's nothing you just put on your laptop because you, you don't want to have your laptop run all the time you want you have want something that can run at home all the time so this little boards like raspberry pi seems very nice and there was a tutorial from from Staticus, like the raspberry bold tutorial how to kind of manually set it up step by step and it's still there this this step-by-step -step manual like really manual putting in all the commands to set mm -hmm. it up 
highly recommend it if you really want to see how the sausage is made. This is really the tutorial for you. Um, but the Raspberry Blitz then kind of started to develop out of we are, of, of us putting the, all those little commands into a bash scripts uh, that so that you automatically easily more quicker can yeah. set up the node. And this was basically the starting point for the Raspberry Blitz, and we did it. In the beginning for developers to have something to play around to develop against uh, or build build on and and also learn for for how to run a node for yourself cool and if we take a step backwards then we look at the lightning node what uh, what are mm -hmm. the benefits of running one uh, in your home and uh, why do you believe that that's important to run your own lightning node mm -hmm. i mean this was um, this was quite interesting. I also, when I first heard about the Lightning Network, I was also thinking like, hmm, this sounds like there's some tendency to centralization possibly there. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because it, it, like with every central system, that's more the efficient thing. People stick to the bigger nodes. There's where the liquidity is. So there are some tendencies going on there. And and there could also be this then this, I mean, to, to this point, it's not that problematic it's it gets problematic when then this gets captured by uh by, by kai, kai, kai corporate li uh, landscape and basically they capture they run the big nodes and at one point you will not be able to run this yourself anymore um and um i had this talk with elizabeth stark she was visiting room 77 uh and and she, she, she and i was skeptical a little bit about this this uh, lightning network and and how it maybe develops in the future and um and she said uh like no it's it's permissionless really everybody can can set up a node and and uh, this way you can you can keep it decentralized. I was thinking, yeah, um, this makes sense, and uh, this sticked my interest. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. it definitely clicked when I was seeing like the Raspi Blitz project to make it easy for everybody to run a node at home to keep it decentralized. And um, and we can talk about what's really the benefit for the person running it, yeah. but for for the broader impact, um, we got so many Raspberry Pis now out there in the network. We kind of forced, we kind of forcing the developers to to make the software in this way that it will always run on a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that that, that so, so, they, so that we, so we need, can keep it accessible to to everyone, right? Yeah, and even if the Raspberry Pi is not me, maybe in the future the best platform to do it on. It, it's the idea to have it really to this form factor to keep it in a. In the form factor and in, in, yeah. in the size uh, uh, and, and manageable from your home so that you can really enforce this, this decentralization yeah. uh, Kaiser principle. Permissionless, of, yeah, that's uh, the most yeah, important so, part. Yeah. yeah, that's the bigger picture. A little bit the smaller, of course, you can ask, well, okay, what's the benefit for me personally? Uh, okay, first of all, of course, you can learn from, from do it from your home. Um, but the good thing is you not just run from your home, uh, you have run it really from your home behind Tor network. So you really have to really the easy way to set up a kind of an, an, an anonymous lightning node in your kind of protected area from your home and and then start you can even develop it to a routing node that is kind of on the network and can earn you even some fees if you mm -hmm. want that but i have to warn some people think like oh i just buy a node i turn it up and i will kind of Ching. automatically yeah. gd, 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 <laughs> always get satoshis that's not that easy <laughs> even though some people lose some satoshis by just opening channels this cost fees yeah, and then they yeah. never they never kind of got uh, get it back in, in fees uh, earning it back so it's it's not an automatic money machine but it's uh, as, as a but uh, what you have to imagine again you can run a piece of this network from your home that is replacing like credit card networks out there. Yeah, like, yeah. So, you're, so you're having a part of a Visa and Master network running from your home and it, it's your access to this network that you can do design in a very anonymous way. If you trust nobody else out there, this is your kind of personal kind of access uh, to the network where you can choose your entry points into the network. You don't rely on, on a third party. Um, the only thing I have to say, not everybody that wants to use the Lightning Network, network needs to run a node. Um, you can really start with, with with an app on your phone uh, that's very easy. They're very approachable uh, nowadays and, and very UX is great on those uh, apps already. Yeah. Um, so, um, But once you get more interested in it and all those little apps, of course, rely a little bit somewhere on third parties that maybe can see a little bit too much of you. If you want to have to full control, run it like on eye level with other people on the network, yeah. you can run it from your home and, yeah. and we keep the network the way that it always that should be possible. And what are some of the challenges you can think of associated with running a Lightning Node and how does uh, Raspberry Blades help users to overcome these, these challenges? Of course, the, 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 the setup thing, of course, is, 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 um, is a start. 
Um, and it's, it's not just uh, that you have uh, a Bitcoin and Lightning node. It's also a lot of other apps that you that are available for you to that makes it easier to uh, manage your your node. Like there's node management software like RTL or Sundar, for example. Yeah. And then kind of other tools that you can use. And having all those tools um, set up in a right way that it's always in, in, a, in a correct co connected and stuff. This is basically all handled by the Raspberry Blitz uh, software. So you really ba basically have just like I want to install this app and then it, you have all the install scripts and it connects to the right places of your notes. Uh, of your node, uh, it all does that automatically for you. So all those kind of setup costs that you have in uh, for setting up tools and then also up, keep them updated uh, all, uh, all the time, that's basically handled for you. And of course, um, again, we started a little bit more for the technical people. So this was all like you have your terminal and your, mm. your kind of SSH in. Um, that's still there and this will be there, I think, forever. Um, but um, of course, to make it easier for, for people, um, there's now also a web UI um, so that, that you can have, use your browser to yeah. control and manage your node and, and to have all the little tools yeah. there. And and that's basically um, the, the the offering that we have now. Is I always tell it like you have a, like like first with the web UI you have a kind of clean car. It's very easy to handle. You you basically get the get the basics very quickly. Right. Yeah. Um, but you always have to the option to to open open, uh, up, the open, yeah. open up the hood and get <laughs> into the mechanics and and yeah. and really. But the, of course, then that's all your your thing when you're really deep deep down and you change stuff. It's also uh, that comes responsibility. And you yeah. released um, the web UI not not so long ago, and um, yeah. uh, in the terminal there is also the menu, and menu is also well a little bit uh, graphical, of course. But yeah. um, from uh, from my uh, uh, DOS uh, <laughs> years, <Exactly>. I, I, <laughs> I I was just like uh, like home. And but I, what what I wanted to say that it's not very difficult to understand how that works. But of course, the UI, uh, web UI, um, uh, makes it a little bit uh, more uh, well uh, spiffier to to uh, for your experience. For people like me, at <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, it's, it's uh, yeah, it it, it 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 helps, I think, for uh, for people who are starting with uh, running it your uh, themselves. And I was also interested um, the the update uh, procedure uh, mm -hmm. with, for example, other uh, Im implementations. Um, is uh, well it seems more easy but uh, i understand how it works on raspberry blitz but you have to um uh, well install it on your sd card again and for yes. uh, some people that's um, a little bit scary can you explain why it is uh, yeah. the way it is um, there's just uh, some something to first of all, quick explainer. So if you when you start up your your res, uh, recipe blitz, so maybe even you ordered a, a completely prepared one from from a shop look, shop like Fulmo. Yeah. Um, then but but once you have once you need to update, you really need to sh basically shut it down, take out the SD card, and flash a new updated uh, SD yeah. card image on it, put it back in start it again and then let it run through a recovery process um, and then it's basically backed up and uh, also, um, updated and then you have your kind of old system state uh, because you can completely overwrite the sd card that's not a problem yeah, because safe. all your um, yeah. all your important data uh, is on the on on the ssd so on the hard drive uh, that you that yeah. you have on this the setup so that's basically the, the, the routine. Um, sometimes you see in other projects that it's a little bit more convenient. There's basically just a button in the web UI. You click to update and then it then it does the update thing, maybe reboots or something. But but basically it's just a click in a, in a, in a thing. Or you can even do an auto update. I'm not exactly sure if I saw this, but but this would be the kind of dream of some people. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. of course. That, 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 that just... you don't need to do nothing and we'll just auto update. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I think there's there's two things. First of all, it's a little bit complicated to to have this this kind of uh, download something, write it to a C card, reboot it. So so there's the manual process also kind of uh, makes it easy for us a little bit. Um, but I uh, what I really what I, why I think to do the SD card thing uh, is helpful because every time with the new SD card, 
we have a fresh system state right. uh, that, yeah. that, that that kind of come. this helps us very much in the supporting thing because Raspberry Blitz is not a not a company. There is not a professional kind of support team that that helps you, but there's a great great community that tries yeah. to to give you support. Yeah. So uh, in Telegram channels or or you can report to the to the to the GitHub issues. Um, maybe if you found a bigger problem, go to the GitHub. If you have first questions, uh, go go to the Telegram groups, um, and it really really helps to. Uh, um, to to train the people on uh, on this SD card thing on on this update mechanism, so, so so it's a basic skill to run your nodes that you know how to flash an SD card, and we basically yeah. train this on every update. And when you have a problem with your with your nodes, some the, the basic question on on uh, the answer on on the support groups is: Have you tried to reflash the yeah, SD card? Yeah, that's yeah, that, I think the things you're saying now is is it's important to to just be able to do it yourself because you're in that learning process, uh, running your node. Uh, means also learning how how it works and how um, how you can Take manage it, right? Yeah. 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 E even if we make it simple with the yeah. with the web UI, all the rest, the, the one basic skill you should should be able to have is like know how to flash an SD card. Yeah. Because this is really something you really need if you run into trouble. It's the first thing you should try because then it's a clean system and it tries yeah. to rebuild everything, and uh, and it helps a lot of uh, to reduce the support um, load that comes yeah. uh, otherwise on on on, on, on the on the volunteers there, and they 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 give you their free time basically, so so um, make it easy for them. Not to and not too complicated. And for, for them people to help who you. are choosing between Umbrel, BTC Pay Server, or uh, Raspi Blitz, for example, or uh, some other uh, implementation, um, what are some other key differences between uh, Raspi Blitz and the others? Mm -hmm. So let's let's take take Umbrel because I think yeah. that's the best kind of um, comparison you you can make. Uh, Umbrel, first of all, is uh, also kind of very similar. Started like a, a Bitcoin Lightning node on a Raspberry Pi, um, and um, they 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 pivoted a little bit now. They they offer even a lot of more apps to install, and their kind of goal is to be a home server mm -hmm. for for uh, so so that you really can use it for archive your photos, uh, home yeah. home automation and stuff. So. It's uh, totally fair to 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 uh, to be uh, that that they want to provide a solution for this, as they still have a good focus on Bitcoin and Lightning, and but they always have they have a broader vision, so to say, like where Raspberry Blitz just wants to be your Bitcoin and Lightning node, they want to be your, your complete home server. And the first. I mean, the first sound it sounds nice uh, because the more you can do with with with, with uh, such a machine, the better. Uh, but remember, uh, a, a node is really there. You have really your money, your funds on there, and it's kind of a hot wallet, always connected to the internet, basically. Yeah. So um, it's an attack vector somehow. So um, the so one strategy is to be more secure, is not to install too much on your on your um, on your machine and Raspberry Blitz kind of does this from the beginning and not offering even you yeah. too, too no, much no, no. that it's you can install safer. with Rumble you need a little bit more discipline then uh, and uh, to, to not install too much basically all the appealing uh, yeah. icons in the app store yeah and all the appealing app <laughs> store or core icons lightning and L D at the same time <laughs> I mean you can you, you could do this on Raspberry Blitz too so yeah <laughs> <laughs> very <laughs> experimental it's more, yeah it's, it's, it's experimental um, so first of all Umbrel has uh, has has a beautiful UI so they really they, they come more yeah. from from the um, UX first kind of yeah, kind of yeah, thing, yeah. It, it, you get this like more like Apple ish. Is I like like Apple is doing Apple -ish. kind of products yeah. more feeling, yeah. and this is maybe yeah. even the separator. I think Umbrel from the beginning, uh, you you have more the feeling of being a, a privileged customer, and you could even see it in the structure of the uh, of the project because it's 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 a startup. It's it's really a company, um, and they got even got VC funding now, like yeah. a year ago, something like three million or something. So. Um, so they very set up in a, in a different kind of way, um, and um, so far it's okay. That's definitely something you can choose from. If you like more being have have professional kind of product uh, by a company, then then definitely Umbrel is 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 a thing to go. But uh, they are not open source. So and, and even they try to appeal very open, and uh, they even have a license, a software license that is uh, qu quite liberal, like gives you a lot of freedoms. Um, it's still you have to understand the code is owned by the company and they just yeah. allow you stuff. They allow you a lot. Um, and the, the only thing they basically not allow you is to use it commercially. Um, their, 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 um, their, their source code, um, but the, co the code is still owned by the company. And yeah. with the Raspberry Blitz, it's
it's a really open source project. Basically, you become uh, when you when you download the software or you download the code, uh, you you really become also an owner of yeah. of the whole system you're running like from the software side yeah. uh, it's it's you can basically take the software can make it your own and it's already your own basically you can make it even your own by doing a, a company building building a company on it to completely fork it and replace whatever uh, i am doing with the software so so i um, it's it's really the way like bitcoin and lightning uh, everything else is written uh, for uh, for for the bitcoin e infrastructure sphere um so recipe blitz keeps very very close to that kind of open source mantra and tries to be a community um, and tries to be open to decentralization so if you want to fork recipe blitz you i'm happy i'm very happy when you do want to build your company on it do it um if you do the better product that's great and 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 then we even can think about cooperation it's yeah, like yeah. It's, it's 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 like like cooperating it's 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 not about being competition i mean sure that's always a little bit competition if you do stuff but um i think those are the big differences maybe first of all one example um that i because i always i also did a startup once so i know a little bit about those vc structures um First of all, you have to ask, they got 3 million um, and investors want the money back, like 10x. And um, so they have to make money. They have to make money. Yeah, and they have way, to, right, at least 30 million. I mean, at least 30 million the, yeah, the yeah. investors want to see back. And once when they got the money, they told the investors a business model, how they want to make this money. Yeah, I yeah. haven't heard from Umbral until yet. And, 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 and I have to say, everybody that chooses to use the Umbral project, they should at least uh, need an answer how will Umbro make money so that people can transparently decide yeah. if they approve yeah. if, if they approve this this kind of way they want to be part of a customer journey in this kind of direction or not so at least i think there's some transparency waiting and on the other side and this is the maybe last point because i already yeah. the ticket, <laughs> um, there's this um, when, when even even the, the developers at Umbro. Um, they started maybe the company. They're very proud of what they're doing. They now have an investor on board. As soon as they lose control of the company, um, it, this project can go a wrong way, and they have not the freedom to fork it and 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 do in another company. If yeah, this yeah. project goes wrong, they lose their project, and the only one thing they can do is go away and cry, and maybe make it a non-commercial fork. And that's yeah, the yeah, maximum yeah. they can do. They cannot yeah. compete with, with, with the bad investors taking over if, if, if this could happen. So this yeah. is really why I like the real open source way for critical Bitcoin and Lightning infrastructure. Not everything yeah. needs to be open source. There's some stuff around, um, but for the basics, like running a node, like this is really, this is the, really the basis of the infrastructure. It we're has to be open here. source. That's really yeah. where this makes sense. And, and, and the, gong, the gong is already there, but I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, screw it. I just want to ask you another question <laughs> because right, okay, this is sure. a uh, really, really important question in my opinion, because what are the plans of, of, for you for the future with, with REST Pipelines? Yeah, um, I mean, the good thing is really that the, the, the rest uh, with the rest Blitz project, we really could see that we are um, very lucky to to drive the community in, and that it's very already um, kind of carried by the community, like the chance, mm -hmm. the support, and and also the contributors on GitHub. We see a lot of people um, at least reporting issues, helping on issues, and also like um, providing uh, pull requests uh, with new features or improvements. And we want to 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 more foster this because uh, I mean, my my figure was kind of still like a very central one. And I got in the past a kind of personal support from from Fulmo to to develop on the project. And um, now it was the idea that we are kind of try to get s some bigger funds somewhere, like apply for for some funding, but mm. then more put it into uh, into more community kind of um, kind of topics, like more like setting some bounties from from features we we uh, we think are very good, or having some more developer meetings somewhere so that we bring the community a little bit more together. So kind of foster this this community spirit that that we that developed yeah. over the last kind of almost five years and and really have it ready for even for more decentralization in the, yeah. in the project. And you can also donate, right? To the, yep. to the project. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So there is uh, on raspberryblitz.org. You find a not very uh, beautiful website, but uh, <laughs> but uh, it's but you can find the it donation. Works. Yeah, it's if I could find a donation link uh, then um, on the site, so raspberryblitz.org. Uh, very happy to take uh, take some donations and then distribute them kind of over the community awesome. in the next kind of year. Community driven. That's what we what yeah, we like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> community yeah. driven. <laughs>
Yeah. I mean, it's you have to see it's a company it can be great uh, and it can have great support and stuff like like stuff. A community is always a little bit there is a price of anarchy, uh, so so the, you always pay a little bit. So just <laughs> yeah, keep in mind. Uh, uh, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Man. Thanks, uh, Russo. We need to have you uh, back on the show because uh, this this was real uh, the summum of open source. I mean, this is great to to talk about that. And we had a lot of lightning questions, but uh, well. Uh, some other time. <laughs> sure, I'd sure, be happy to come minutes, back. It's just 21 more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Connect the well, world. Luckily, we uh, still have one question left uh, for you, Rutzel. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we prepared three, but you may only choose one. That's uh, the downside of it. But um, yeah, we have a question from Mo, and she's a Bitcoin design community uh, and uh, also a spiral grantee. Uh, yes, the wit. He is from uh, Breeze Technology. And Henrik, and he is from N Capital. So you may choose one of them, and then Edward will play the audio file for you. Okay, so um, I, I already told you that I have a, have a kind of startup uh, history. So let's do the capital thing. Oh, okay, capital. All right, Henrik. My name is Henrik Skogström from Ellen Capital, and my question is: Who sent the first Lightning transaction on mainnet? <laughs> oh, <laughs> right, that's a pop yeah, quiz. Trick you, Come trick on. <laughs> Ah, oh, I I have to blank on that. So the um, there was at least I can at least say there was some 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 things happening like the first test that sold for beer, as I far as I remember was in room seventy seven. Um, there uh, roast beef I think bought a beer from York with with uh, test that lightning as far as I remember. Okay. Um, and there was um, I can remember really seeing the first time I was seeing somebody. My name lightning. is Henrik Skogström. Oh. Oh, there she goes. Uh, sorry. Oh, okay. So no, was not was not happy with my answer. No. I get it. <laughs> He's interrupting. No, but continue, continue. Yeah, um, the first time I really saw a kind of lightning. Also, st it was st still on the test net, but uh, that was at the one hacker conference we we were, and um, there was uh, Nikola was bringing a kind of first little box with a big button on it, and and he he kind of said like, yeah, like always, I hit the button. I sent one Satoshi over test net, and and we can start can can just leave it here and and. and <laughs> And on the end of the conference, uh, like whatever, it's kind of we, we just count the sets, and I will we will donate to to uh, I think it was oh I think it was Julian Assange or not exactly sure or Edward Snowden, but at least mm. it was a good for a good course. But I really mm. like this was really like one set, okay, one set, one set, <laughs> <laughs> nice. So so this lighting thing seems to be seems to be something. So cool. um, yeah, that's far as I remember. Sorry for not being maybe historically correct here, but uh, that's my, no, no, my I mean, anecdotes. I, I really love the answer. I <laughs> yeah. mean, I, I can't ver verify it, but um, I really yeah. love, uh, love it. <laughs> yeah, really, really nice to talk yeah, to you. Uh, indeed. So, yeah, Thanks, and, man. And we, we are so short in time, so we definitely uh, want you back in a future, uh, future show, man. Yeah, sure. So, uh, hey, where can people follow you? Um, so the um, basically on Twitter, I think it's the easiest way to do. Um, so that's on Twitter, it's root zoll, so R O O T Z O L L. So um, that's uh, basically my easiest way to follow, like on updates and news. And of course, if you're more into coding uh, a little bit, or at least if you're on GitHub, you also find um, if you go to raspyblitz.org and then you follow the GitHub there, you can see that the Raspberry Blitz is on my personal. GitHub, you can just find it there, and of course, uh, give it a star and a follow, and of ring course. the bell. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. Well, thanks again, and uh, thanks for everyone else uh, to listen, and thanks uh, to everyone participating in the Sushi Radio Rings of Fire, and of course, everyone, thanks for helping us in our mission, connecting the world together. If you like our plan content, then please support us in our mission. Visit our website, connecttheworld.live, where you can also donate and subscribe, like, and share our content on your play favorite platform. We need you to complete our mission, Connect the World, so keep those nodes running on Raspberry Blitz, of course. Um, sets flowing, no, you, you, you can choose for yourself. And keep those <laughs> rings burning, guys. Um, and see you all next week on the same Lightning Channel. Tot ziens, uh, Rutsel. Bye-bye, Rutsel. Bye-bye. <laughs>